Cosmopolitan deadline. Or as before, there were negative reviews from like, angry virgins. <laughs> Hi, I'm an angry virgin, and you're watching a mean video. That's it, that's my intro. For the sake of the new YouTube Terms of Service, I would need to say that that opening was mostly a joke. I'm Amanda, you're watching Soul Entertainment, and I went to a couple tapings of A Little Late with Lily Singh. When I say a couple, I mean four, and that was not the original plan. I was only supposed to go to one. When A Little Late with Lily Singh aired, I knew I wanted to do a video on it. However, I didn't just want to review the show because everyone was already doing that. The way I decide if I'm going to do a commentary video is I look at whether or not I have anything to add to a conversation. I don't want to just repeat what everyone else is saying, especially if the same evidence is out there already. What I didn't see was people trying to be audience members for the show. So what I did is I went and checked One Iota because that's where Jimmy Kimmel gets his on-camera audiences and he's on the same network. Now I've been an on-camera audience member a couple of times for this similar type of show, so that's why I felt I was qualified to review the show in this way. I feel I have a good understanding of what's a normal use of an applause sign, what's a normal use of a warm-up in the beginning, what's a normal amount of production, crew involvement in taping, etc. General things that most shows like this need. And I can honestly say that I was surprised by how overproduced a little late with Lily Singh is. Let me start by saying I was only gonna go to one taping. Adam Conover was gonna be a guest. I like Adam Conover. That way I'm not just going and seeing a random person and then leaving it all up to Lily to entertain me. After that taping, the crew told me that the episode would be airing sometime later that week. That week ended, and then another week started, and then another week started, and it was like a week of repeats. Oh, they're not gonna air my episode. I'm sure eventually they will. It is currently February 5th, and that episode was October 23rd. At the time, I figured they may never air the episode, I still want to make this video, so I decided I was going to try and go to another taping. So I saw that Karen Gillan was going to be a guest, I'm in love with Karen Gillan. Perfect. That episode hasn't aired. There was another taping later that week on November 7th, my birthday, that had no guest listed. I figured that that was either very good or very bad, so I applied. It ended up being Reggie Watts, who is an American comedian and currently is also the DJ for James Corden's show, but the point is, is that I went by myself, drove to LA, and sat through this shit show for you all on my birthday. Please don't skip the ads. Gas is expensive. The final taping I went to was actually a little over a month later on December 12th, and it was the fourth to last show. So the way that A Little Late with Lily Singh operates is that during the work week, they would record two episodes a day, sometimes three. I went to the fourth to last show on the 12th, and that episode was special because it was a team super takeover. It was invite only. How the f did I do that? I really didn't even do anything. I just talked to the right person. See from Iowa. Amanda Orange County. Kennedy from Oklahoma. Two, I will see you soon about the season one. That is a and before someone comes at me and says, Amanda, another fan could have taken that spot. They were struggling to get people in there that didn't fill the audience, so don't even come at me for that. But the reason that episode is also special is because it's the episode where RuPaul was a guest, and that episode aired a little over a week ago. So I signed an NDA for each episode I went to. So I will not be talking about the contents of the episodes that have not aired yet. I will talk about a couple of things that happened before I signed the NDA, and a couple of things that happened after I left the building, after the show was finished recording. A couple of things I've seen in commentary videos is people critiquing the audience itself. Itself. Some people were like, they must be working the hell out of that applause sign. A little late with Lily Singh doesn't have an applause sign. They don't need one. Before the show starts, after we've all checked in and signed our NDAs, the warm-up comes outside, which is something I'm not used to, but because this is a smaller studio, they shoot the show at Siren Studios across the street from BuzzFeed. They do not shoot at NBC Studios, nor do I think they ever will. The warm-up comes outside, tries to get us loud, you know, get us going, get us hyped, and a comment that was made by her was, now guys, we want to make sure that we're being as loud and excited as possible because sometimes when people are watching at home, if they don't hear laughter, then they might think it's not that funny. Now the thing is about the RuPaul episode, every single audience member, aside from a handful of NBC executives, don't worry, we'll talk about that later. Most of the people that are there, myself included, had been there before. Or they were huge fans of Lily's and they had flown in from around the world and around the country to come to the show. They did not need coaching. This was not fake laughing for them because for the most part, everyone was there was so excited to be there. They wanted Lily to see them. They wanted to be recognized that they were the loudest and they were making it happen because it's Lily and they got to see Lily. So this episode isn't exactly a good baseline for me to talk about the audience atmosphere, but this thing happens. They see us all. I made the choice of not purchasing merch. I did have money to purchase merch because I knew that because it was a fan takeover, 
the chances of me getting set up front if I'm not wearing merch were very low. I can't wait to see my merch animatics tonight. And then I decided not to because I wanted to eat later that night and didn't want to pay for a hoodie for a show I didn't like. So instead of being sat right up front, they sat me in like the third row, which ended up working out perfectly because I am in nearly every single audience shot. If you want to try and find me throughout the episode, my hair is curled, I'm wearing my glasses, and I'm wearing a green jacket. Where's swell? As we're being sat down, we're being handed candy. The warm-up comes out again. Now, having a warm-up for your audience is not unusual. It's normal to have a comedian come in before the host to get the audience loosened up and laughing and clapping and get them ready for the show. And it's not an easy job. I do not envy any of these people. A warm-up is normal. What they have the warm-up do is not normal. So before the warm-up gets to start their spiel, a voice comes on in the sky, and we are told to look at her while she's standing on the monologue X and laugh and applaud and do all of that while they record it. Okay guys, so we're gonna sweep the camera again. Okay, one more time. Louder, okay. So now we're gonna have her go over there. You guys are gonna look at Lily's desk and you guys are gonna laugh and clap, okay. Now we're gonna do something a little more polite, just some polite clapping. Now I want you all to look at each other and act like you're discussing what was just said. Now you guys all know Lily. Sometimes she makes some off-color jokes. She's not always politically correct, which I don't know where you got that from. You guys are all going to act like Maybe you're not sure if you want to clap, so you're just like, mm, and then like, like polite clapping. We're gonna do that. And there's cameras here, there's cameras here. Even as you're recording, they are recording the audience. For this particular audience, they really didn't need to do this. Everyone wanted to see Lily. Her paid audience members were there. And I'm going to talk about her paid audience members in a minute, but they were the ones who orchestrated the whole event. If anyone there was not getting f***ing hyped, they were gonna make sure they were getting hyped. Now before I move on, I wanna talk about something that was said. So after we had finished recording all of our laugh tracks for later, the warm up started talking a little bit, like has anyone been here before? Now Lily's here, she doesn't know you guys are here. Of course there's applause and screaming because Lily's name was said. And I don't fully remember how we got onto this topic. Warm up said something that kind of took me aback a little bit because why would you admit that? Especially when she said it in front of the NBC execs that I know were also in the studio at the time. Okay guys, and uh, you guys love these chairs, right? Aren't these comfortable chairs, right? If you guys come back tomorrow, you guys can take some of these home with you. Someone's already got claim on Lily's desk, but you guys can absolutely come back for the chairs. Why would you say that? <laughs> I don't think you need me to tell you that that's not good and not something that you should admit to your audience when the whole goal of them being there was partially, we wanna show Lily that we love and support her, but also partially, please don't cancel the show. The warm-up was going to start doing a game with all of us to like get us going, but I guess we were running a bit behind on time, so instead we decided to skip that. Now I will give Lily this, because she does something that I haven't seen done before, where she comes out before she's introduced as the host and the taping actually starts. She runs out to say hi. On this occasion, she came out and saw a bunch of people from Team Super that she knew. So she was all surprised and excited and everyone's clapping and smiling and laughing and yay, it's Lily. And this was a moment that was included in her vlog. And I will give it to Lily. That is a genuinely nice thing that she does to come out and greet her audience before the taping actually starts to work out like, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go back in there. I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna come out do the monologue. You guys are all gonna cheer when the door is open and then we're gonna get the show started. Are you guys ready? I do think that's very nice and a nice personal touch. To talk about the RuPaul episode, we must first talk about these four people, but we must definitely talk about Rico. To my knowledge, all four of them are at the very least permanent audience members for a little late with Lily Singh. Now I can only confirm that Rico is a paid audience member because he told me, but also I had overheard one of the PAs say to one of the crew members that they had given him SAG paperwork. Now, I don't remember seeing any of them the first episode I attended, but I did meet Rico and see Heidi and Sherelle at the second episode that I attended. Rico started talking to me before the taping of the second episode. He was not shy about the fact that he knew all the crew and that he was in fact working for the show. He said he had attended so many tapings that Lily had taken notice and offered to try and find him a job for the show. He told me that his his job varied, but for the most part it boiled down to him being, in fact, a paid audience member. On that day in particular, he did bring a bag with him because he brought a change of clothes for the second taping that day. Rico is very open about this job on Instagram. He posts clips from the show he's been in and talks about Lily being a great boss and why wouldn't he want to work with her and things like that. Lily doesn't seem to have a problem with people knowing that Rico works on the show as an audience member. Audience is good. Sherelle and Rico are there. I feel like Rico's my comfort now. It's like when I see him in the audience, I'm like, okay. Rico's here, it's fine. Aside from when the show is actually being taped. You, you, go, 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 go. Can we get a chair? Here. here you go, this is for you. What's your name? What's your name? Rico. Rico, thank you 
you so much for the great comment. Rico, this is yours. So Rico and I talked quite a bit before the second taping that I went to and then a little bit after the third taping I went to, which is when Rico approached me and another attendee and said, hey, are you guys as big of fans of Lily as I am? And I kind of didn't really answer. I was like, oh, we met the other day. Hi, what's up? What's going on? He invited us to the Team Super Takeover event that was happening on December 12th. And I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't sure I was going to go, partially because I had no plans of going to any other episodes after that third one, mainly because I felt I was just better off waiting for one of the episodes to air at that point. And also there was another audience member that kept bothering me and making me very uncomfortable before taping started. And I didn't want to deal with it again because I had seen him at a previous taping as well and he had recognized me from a previous taping and that's why he came over to bother me. Then I saw that Rico was openly publishing on his story and stuff about the team's super takeover. They were clearly were having issues filling seats so I was like, it. Let's RSVP. After I RSVP'd, I was supposed to send in a photo identification and then still apply through one iota, but it was also stressed that this was a fan-only event and this was also a secret. The crew knew, her assistant knew, and very quickly the NBC executives knew, but she did not know until we were there. For the most part, what has aired is what was recorded. They added in a couple laughs here and there, but they've done that with pretty much every single fucking episode it looks like. So that's not a surprise. I wanted more out of that interview. RuPaul has had a very interesting life and there's an interview that I would have loved to see except I wish Lily was a little better at interviewing people and that's my main critique for the show itself is I need Lily to learn to be better at interviewing. So much of the interviews start out with Lily being like, oh we met this way and it's like okay we get it you know famous people but also the show is 30 minutes you're gonna make us sit through a dumb game. Let's hurry this up. I wish Lily had more interview experience before going into the show because that's something she clearly doesn't seem comfortable with doing yet is like inquiring into people which is why I think they spend so much time on the games and the games I'm sorry they're not interesting to watch if I am watching your show Lily for you and you're trying to get me invested into this random guest that you have on here you do not give me enough time to be aware of who this person is and to be interested in seeing them play some random game where they name off what these pictures make them think of when you were given such a small time slot and you split up half the time slot with a dumb game you gotta cut out the filler. Also in these interviews, very much would like to hear less about you. On the RuPaul episode they did, Lily's audience got skills? Question mark, Which was a talent show where RuPaul and Lily assigned the talent. In case you want to know what Sherelle and Nina look like, here are they being the chosen people from the audience. Thank you for being here. What is your name? Nina. Nina? Are you... Is this your first time in the audience? I basically live here. Thank you for being here. Hi. What is your name? Sherelle. Sherelle, is it your first time here? No. Obviously the dude in the hoverboard was a plant that was obviously set up. Also the guy who did the table ripping, he also did not re-enter the audience with Nina and Sherelle. That entire selection was just planted. Do something spontaneous for your show. Do something that's not overproduced and scripted. It just do something more fun. And also, I'm sorry, what's the point of having fixed audience members if you're not strategically placing them throughout your audience? Now that you guys know what these four look like, you're gonna see them in nearly every single episode. They almost always sit them right in the front row. And I'm assuming that's just to hype up Lily and be like, hey, look, you've got supporters here. It doesn't matter what's going on. But usually the point of audience plans is to spread them out so that they can get the applause going in different sections. It's like a ripple effect. Someone starts clapping and then everyone starts clapping okay that's part of the goal of having an audience plan I don't know why you guys sit them all up front even for bullshitting your show you are doing it wrong but obviously that doesn't matter because again we have all that stock audio and stock footage of the audience clapping so who cares so another thing that happened during the RuPaul episode is that while they were setting up for the game one of the crew members or one of the writers I believe was up front talking with Rico. And it was fairly quiet in the room, so we all could hear fairly clearly. Rico was like, I just don't understand why they have to be here. And the crew member said, you know why they're here. They were pretty transparently referring to the NBC executives. And yeah, you know why they're there. I went to four tapings. I've seen the show. I know why they're there. Lily's monologue became a Twitter moment because she did a whole monologue talking about being bisexual woman and how she had come out about a year prior and how no one should get to dictate how much she talks about being a bi woman of color. And I'm conflicted on this. Lily, I'm going to address you directly, so here we go. On one hand, I want to applaud you. Talk about whatever you want. This is your show. Screw everyone else. And I would do that if this was episode four, maybe five, but this episode that aired was episode 80 something of like 142 that were recorded. This was the fourth to last episode that was recorded. Your viewership is going down. Lily, 
started having an issue with filling the audience because at some point you guys started using SRO, which is standing room only, which is very similar to one iota, except it's paid audience members. So it's easier to fill a crowd with them because people show up because they want to get paid. If this was an earlier episode, I would have applauded you for this statement because then I would have known that, okay, stand your ground, see how it goes over. And then if it doesn't work out, clearly me standing my ground is not keeping people watching and it's not helping reviews. People don't care that I'm standing my ground. They still don't think the jokes are funny. They don't like the games. They don't like the interviews. They don't want X, Y, and Z. They think the show should be canceled. I would have known that you would have had time to adjust and you know, grow as a show and grow as a late night host. However, I know that this was the fourth to last episode that was recorded. And I know that this was one of four episodes that I attended over the span of three months. And I'll tell you something, Lily. I saw zero growth in that time. Nothing changed in how you did this. It's not even you digging your heels in, it's you putting blinders on. You've built an incredible large brand off of YouTube, which is impressive and I will never knock that. A Little Late with Lily Singh is not your YouTube channel. You're the top of the food chain at your YouTube channel. For your channel, you have people that work for you. You are in charge of them. Over at Siren Studios, where A Little Late with Lily Singh is filmed, sure, you are also in charge over there. The thing is though, is that that's not your building. It's NBC's building. Your show is not on your YouTube channel. It's on NBC's network and their slot. And they get to decide whether or not they renew or cancel your show. I highly doubt that NBC gave two shits about the Team Super Takeover. That didn't sway or change their opinion about whether or not to renew or cancel your show. Because right now it's February 5th, it's been two months, and the show still has not been renewed or canceled. At this point in time, there's really nothing you can do but sit back and let all of the episodes that you have filmed, because I know you are sitting on so many episodes right now, which is why I'm always baffled when there's a whole week of repeats. Lily, I believe that you believe almost everything that you say in your monologues. I think those are things that you're passionate about and those are things you want to talk about. But your reactions to criticism is not good and it's not healthy. You clearly internalize it a lot, which is probably why you are digging your heels in and continuing to talk about the things that people are complaining about, which on one hand, good for you, do whatever the you want, but on the other hand, you have people depending on you. If the show is canceled, every single person that works at that studio for a little late with Lily Singh loses their job. The fact that they placed you at Siren Studios away from NBC Studios alone should show you that you are erasable. If you're not making them stupid amounts of money, they will just get rid of your show. It doesn't matter what The Atlantic or CNN says about you because the critics are not the people watching 90% of the time and your viewership is dwindling and I don't know what else to say and I honestly don't even know why I'm bothering to say this? Because your show is done taping for season one. The damage is done. The episodes are shot. I hope your show is picked up for season two, but I hope it's not if you don't get it through your head that there are people depending on you and this is not all about you. If she sees this, well, first off, you're not gonna see this. Hi, I'm nobody. If you see this and you do think it's a mean video, that will be your biggest critique is like, who is this person making this mean video about me? I'm nobody and that's fine. But I hope you get it through your head. I went to four tapings of your show. I talked to some of your crew members. They all seem lovely. And those are people that will lose their job once a little late with releasing is canceled. Every time someone asks me, what do you think of the show? I would answer with the same Thing. I'm excited to see her grow. And it's true. I want you to do well not only for other YouTubers, but also for other women in late night, for other LGBT, for other women of color. Lily, I hope NBC gives a little late with Lily Singh a second chance. I don't think they will, but if they do, I think you need to look at the possibility of needing to do a rebrand. But it's also pointless for me to say that because you getting a second season will just reestablish in your mind that, oh, what I've been doing is fine because clearly that's what got me a second season, so I just need to keep doing what I've been doing. Lily, you're not the first person who has tried to do something outside of YouTube. And the reason a lot of them are able to start to try and do that is because they have what can get them in the door. They've got the well-known face, they've got the numbers, but they don't have what it takes to keep them in the room. Show me why you deserve to stay here. The door was open, you skipped some steps, you built an empire out of a YouTube channel from nothing, from a camera in your room. Lily, I think you clearly have what it takes to get you in the door. I think you also have what it takes to keep you in the room, but you are so focused on what got you in the door 
you don't want to explore what possibilities could keep you in the room. And I know this sounds like a weird think inside the box analogy, but that's not what I'm talking about at all. NBC will cancel your show. There's going to be backlash like, oh, they canceled it because I'm a woman. When this entire time, there's so much evidence that the reason people stop watching is because the show is not funny. The show is not entertaining. It's hard to sit through some of these interviews because they're so uncomfortable to watch. And I don't know what else to do because it's pointless. Like we're just playing the waiting game now. We have no idea what's happening next. Lily could see this video and be like, oh my god, I've seen the error of my ways. What is she gonna do? I don't know why they keep doing full weeks of repeats when I know the amount of episodes that you have recorded, but I'm assuming it's because the episodes are not good. That's it, I'm done talking about this. Once my other three episodes air, I probably won't do another video. There is stuff I wanna talk about in those, but it'll probably just be a Patreon only thing. Did you watch A Little Late with Lily Sing? Have you been to a taping of A Little Late with Lily Sing? Has your episode aired? Do you think A Little Late with Lily Sing will get a season two? Thank Thank you for watching. Thank you to my patrons Buffy, Samani, Jesse, Aaron, and Catherine for supporting me on my Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on my Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social medias, that'll be all up here. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. I can't believe I almost completely forgot about this. After the RuPaul episode, Lily announced that some of her team and some of the NBC execs made us all goodie bags to celebrate the Team Super Takeover. Let me show you guys my NBC goodie bag, which honestly, this bag kind of slaps. A Little Late with Lily Singh presents the ABCs of Late Night Coloring Book. B is for Barack Obama, who will be on this show someday. Just right now, he said his schedule is kind of full. J is for Jimmy. Late Night has plenty of them. Q is to quote my favorite author, Dreams are made up of our potential. Oh, that's right. I said that. Did you know I wrote a book? Hashtag humble brag. Oh, speaking of a book, we also got a copy of How to Be a Boss. What do I do with it? Here's all of my wristbands. Here is the Jolly Rancher that Matthew Santoro stole me. He didn't actually steal me the Jolly Rancher. He found the bag and stole himself one and was like, does anyone want a Jolly Rancher? And I said, sure. And then he was like, oh, it's a green one when he handed it to me and then walked off. So I grabbed a blue one and then I left.